what's up, my friend? Are you a small business owner that loves God, family, country, and capitalism? If so, you're in the right place. Welcome to the War Plan Briefing. My name is Joshua Latimer. Today, we're going to talk about the five dumbest and the five smartest things that I did in my 20s to become a millionaire. First, I want to tell you a quick brief story. When I was 17 years old, I believe it was 1997, 1998, somewhere around there, it was when Rich Dad Poor Dad was published. Now, I grew up in a non-entrepreneurial family and I got a hold of this book. I can't remember why or how, I really can't but it like radically broke my brain. This was my first introduction to the idea of like business or entrepreneurship or trying to make money and all this stuff. It hadn't really crossed my mind before and I was hooked and I was obsessed. From the point when I was 17 years old or so, until I was about 25 years old, uh, all kinds of stupid decisions were made. <laughs> I did all kinds of bad things. Is it just me? Have you done stupid, bad decisions? I, I, if you didn't, I made up for it by doing twice as many to account for you doing less. Uh, look, here's the thing. Uh, if there's a wrong way to do it, I tried it. I'm just saying. Sometimes I joke I have a bachelor's degree in pain and a master's degree in suffering. I don't recommend that. I don't think it's necessary for you to have to do everything wrong just so you can succeed. Uh, but I'm going to share those things with you so you can go faster, so you can make more money, and you can avoid the mistakes that I made, or at least partially avoid them, or maybe avoid some of them. Uh, the Bible says a wise man has many counselors, right? So let me be a counselor for two seconds, share my experience, and we'll get into it. The first stupid thing that I did early in my entrepreneurial journey was try to find the mythical, magical easy button. I literally, it was like Ponce de Leon trying to find the fountain of youth. I searched, I scoured. I would go to Barnes and Noble in or I think it was Borders. Remember Borders books? It's been a while. Do they still exist? I don't know if they still exist. Borders. I don't know. Doesn't matter. But I would go there and I'd sit in the chair and I'd read all these money-making magazines uh, as a 19, as a 20-year-old. I bought vending machines and a credit card when I turned 18. These little quarter pin, uh, quarter gumball machines. I bought a bunch of them. I was going to do a, a, a windshield chip repair business. I was on mailing lists and I would fill out forms and I would call 800 numbers to try to get information on all this, how to get really rich doing almost nothing opportunities that were filling the pages of Small Business Opportunities magazine, which I don't think is published anymore. Maybe it is. And I was truly trying to figure out how do I get maximum results from doing nothing? I think this is a common rookie mistake. I don't think I was a diabolically evil person for thinking like this, but it was definitely a very immature, short-sighted way of thinking, not just because the easy button doesn't really exist, but because the real joy, satisfaction, fulfillment, and growth that you get comes from the work you do itself, not from the money. You know, the biggest illusion that poor people believe is that the happiness and the reward is the money. No, it's not. It's who you become on the journey up the mountain on your way towards money. Money is not even the goal. Money is the derivative of the goal. You know, Myron Golden has been a good friend of mine for almost six years, and he does all these incredible teachings, but he says there's two types of work that happen when you work. There's the work that you do on it, and then there's the work that it does on you, and who you become as you're journey progresses is your reward. Who you become and the level up and the pain and the little extra grit you get and your neck gets a little bit thicker so you can hold a heavier crown in whatever domain you're in, that is actually the reward you want in the first place. But of course, I didn't realize that and I wasted a lot of time, a lot of money uh, trying to find the easy button. The second mistake that I made all the way till I was about 25 years old was being too slow to get around the right friends. Or I could say waiting too long to delete and hit control alt delete and the eject button on some of the wrong friends. Now I have some friends that go back to high school, but very, very, very few, right? My shout out to Cy. Okay. He's like my BFF, right? We grew up together. Uh, that's about it. Cy, right? And, and my relationships evolved, but during that time period of about 17 to 25, I would waste humongous amounts of time being around the wrong people. Now, what I'm about to say doesn't mean I didn't love these people. It doesn't mean I don't care for these people. I think the real problem was that I didn't love myself enough. I didn't care for myself enough. And so I would waste time pretending like I was in the right room, thinking the same thoughts, making useless small talk with people when really deep down, I knew I wanted to do something big. And whenever I tried to talk about the dreams or the ideas I had, people weren't vibing with it. That group of friends was not vibing. They, they, they didn't get it. They didn't understand it. They didn't want it. And the more I talked about it, the more uncomfortable it made them feel because you know, in a way you expressing and articulating your big aspirational goals to the wrong people, what happens is it makes them feel like they're less than because they don't have those goals. 
The truth is they're not less than for not having them. You're not more than for having them, but there is this incongruence that happens and it is a massive weight around your ankle when you're trying to go faster being around people like this. It's painful. It's not easy to do it. You don't have to be a jerk about it, but you do got to be decisive and mature and the faster that you delete you know, the, the old relationships that are holding you back, the faster you can get on with the success waiting for you. The third dumb thing that I did in my uh, early 20s was being cheap. I was cheap. Now, what's funny is I was cheap with certain things, but I was an idiot with other things. So my wife and I, we would go buy DVDs at Walmart. We lived in a trailer park. We had no money. I was a pizza delivery guy. We spent thousands of dollars. This is embarrassing as I think about it. As I'm saying it out loud, I'm like, hmm, this is actually embarrassing. We'd spend thousands of dollars on DVDs. And so in our trailer, we had this gigantic shelf of like every movie ever, and we'd buy them all. And not that DVDs are really expensive, but when you make 500 bucks a week as a pizza guy, like I, I wonder what percentage of my income went to these stupid DVDs. It was almost like this status symbol for us. It, I wasn't cheap when it came to buying DVDs, but when it came to buying books or, or, or investing in a course or hiring a mentor, there was no way I would have even considered that stuff back then because I had a misunderstanding of value. I, did, I had a misunderstanding of the difference between an expense and an investment. They're like not the same thing. Uh, and being cheap made me go slower, but not just with the things that I would buy, but also with employees. So even after I got into business, I try to figure out like, how can I get this guy to do this for free? How can I pay them the smallest amount of money, right? Uh, that's a bad idea. I didn't want business partners because then I'd have to split the money with them. And all these things held me back. It was immature, it was short-sighted. I didn't understand what was what was what. And these were some of the stupid things I did. Don't do that. I'm not saying you have to have a partner. What I'm saying is the, if the reason you're not even considering a partner is only because you wanna keep all the money for yourself, that is a poverty broken mindset. And most people that build extreme wealth do it on a journey with a team they have people that have been with them a long time you're probably not the exception to that so it's just something to consider the fourth stupid thing i did was quitting too soon i did a variety of harebrained businesses you know between the ages of 17 to 25 all kinds of weird ones i won't get into all of them now i'll save those for some other youtube videos but one of my businesses was called box topping for kids box topping for kids you're like josh what's a box top well basically i had this flyer and i would sell ads to local businesses to print on this gigantic flyer it was 11 inches by 18 and a half inches long and in and it would get put on the tops of pizza box orders at the pizza store that i worked at it's pretty simple right but i sold out the the flyer and i remember the very first time i did it i made almost two thousand dollars the first time I did it, after printing costs and after everything, I kept close to $2,000. It was the easiest money I'd ever made in my life. It took me like two days worth of work. And then these 10,000 flyers or however many there were, maybe 15,000 would go out for the whole month with all the orders. And then the next month I'd make money again. But I gave up on that business. Now, I'm not saying that was my Amazon.com. I'm not saying that that simple, silly thing was this huge $100 million thing. But I can tell you this, I could have made millions of dollars with that simple, silly idea. In fact, if you're watching this go do that thing because it works it makes sense it's not hard to sell it's very easy to manage but what did i do well i just quit i got bored with it you know and for many ventures in a row as soon as it started to work i'd get bored with it and this pattern of behavior crippled me financially for many many years it was difficult for me maybe because i'm a high creative i used to be a musician i needed variety and when things started to get a little bit boring i would give up on it but you gotta understand there's a lot of money in the boring don't quit too soon don't quit the band right before they get the record deal i see it happen over and over and over for certain small business owners. Are you one of them? If you are, admit it, but don't do that. I forbid you, stop it. And last but not least, a huge dumb thing I did in my 20s was not communicating with my wife. I would just be in my own world, in my own bubble, going and trying stuff, bouncing off the walls with this idea and that idea, never really clearly articulating a master vision for our life, never leading my family or my household, never casting that, that clear vision to the people around me so they could like even have a chance to get on board. I just was a lone wolf. I'd run around and do stuff and it destroyed my relationship with my spouse. The problem for a lot of small business owners is that when you have dissension and friction at home, good luck making a lot of money. Good luck growing a really big business. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I can tell you this. When your wife and you are in momentum, you're connected, okay? When she's your biggest cheerleader, if you're the guy being the entrepreneur, it's rocket fuel to your business. There is literally a correlation to our net worth as a family and us communicating and getting into momentum as a couple. It's literally 
one-to-one -one correlated. And for years, I did not do this. I'd do my own thing. I'd feel sorry for myself. I did every stupid thing you could imagine. When I stopped that, when we pivoted, everything changed. Let's get into the next part of this video. Okay, here's the good stuff. Let's talk about the five smartest things I did in my 20s to become a millionaire, because it's pretty cool. Now, I did it at the very end of being 20. My net worth crossed a million right at the end. I'm proud to say there's lots of people way younger than that that are having bigger results than I had. Uh, but that's why channels like this exist. Beat, beat what I did. I wasted a lot of time. I don't want you to do it. Let's get to the first one. The first smart thing that I did to make a million dollars or have a million dollars net worth in my 20s was focus. Focus is not sexy. Focus is a word. Maybe you're clicking off this video. No, it's just another guy telling me to focus. Listen to me. You need tunnel vision. You need focus. You need momentum. It's like a magnifying glass trying to burn an ant when you're a kid. You got to have it just right so that all the energy is focused and fixed on one single dot, right? And then the heat starts to burn. The heat creates something. The same is true with your business. I didn't know that in my early 20s, but I finally got focused. And the business I started and got focused on was a very simple business. I was a window cleaner. I had a squeegee. I would knock on people's doors and clean the windows on their house. Can you believe that something as silly as is that made millions of dollars for my family and my business partner and his family. It's crazy, but it's true, but it's really because of focus. You can make money doing all kinds of things, but the one thing that people do less than they should is focus. They have seven streams of income. You're not supposed to have seven streams of income. If you're broke and you're just new entrepreneur, you're supposed to focus on one thing, make your million bucks, and then invest your money to have distributed forms of income. Wealthy people have seven streams of income because they have $12 million in capital deployed into projects. That ain't you. You need focus. You need to go sell something to someone for a profit over and over and over. Even when it's boring, even when you don't want to do it anymore, you do it anyway. And again, just like I said in the beginning, who you become on the journey is going to fundamentally change and the floodgates will open up for you. The second smart thing that I did was start investing in mentors. I started taking mentorship very seriously. Now, not all of my mentors did I pay. I was fortunate to meet key people at certain times that changed the trajectory of my life from my high school football coach who owned the Domino's pizza that I delivered for. He was trying to get through to me for years when I was doing all the dumb stuff, but he was making progress. I was listening to him, but he was a, he was a mentor. Then on the internet, I found forums. I found people that had what I wanted, that were ahead of me, that were a few chapters ahead of me. And I would start mirroring and modeling and replicating what they did. I would pay them to talk to me on the phone. I would pay them to have lunch with me at a conference and I would listen very intently and do what they said. Mentors, here's the thing about mentors. Mentors will never make you successful, but mentors will help you go faster. Winners win. And if you're destined to win, you're going to win. But it'd be pretty cool if it took six months instead of six years, wouldn't it? Would that be pretty cool? Get yourself someone who's ahead of you so you can go faster. The third thing that I finally did was I started to make real investments, not just in equipment with my cleaning business, although that was scary and that's a thing, but investments in my brain, investments in my network, in investments in my community, investments in my education, invents, investments in my mindset all the time. It's actually kind of a, like addiction level at this point. Okay. I love to spend money on my brain and you should too, because it's your biggest asset. It's the one thing no one can take away from you. If I took everything that Elon Musk has and deleted it and he had to start over, I think he'd be okay. Do you think he'd be okay? I'm pretty sure. I think he'd be, you, you guys think he'd be okay. Would he make it? Would he be broke? No, he would become a billionaire again. Why? Because of his brain, because his brain is the asset. His mindset is the asset, his grit and his skill sets, right? So don't be scared to invest. Now, as a caveat, investment doesn't mean endlessly spending money on more and more education while doing nothing. That's not, that's, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is don't be scared to spend a few bucks on your brain so that you can go execute and get a result. The faster and the more that you do that, the bigger yield you're going to have. It'll change your life for the rest of your life. The fourth smart thing I did was get a business partner. Now, most people, when they ask me if they should get a partner, um, almost always I say no. But the reason I say no is because they're getting a partner for the wrong reason. They, they want a business partner because they want someone to come save their day. They have a small broken business. It doesn't work. It's totally broken. It's a mess. It's a crap show. And they think, I need a partner. Then it will be okay. But that's not how it works. If you have a business partner, you got to understand you're getting into a marriage, okay? It's very easy to get into a marriage, very hard to get out of a marriage. It's kind of like gluing two pieces of paper together. They're very easy to do. It's a little more messy when you try to take them back apart. So be careful with that. However, 
Because when I was younger, I wanted everything for myself, it held me back. When you have a partner, someone to go to war with, if they're the right personality, they have the right values, they have the same principles that you have, neither of you need to be perfect, but you have defined, distinct, different lanes that you focus in. If you have a shared mission and shared values and your families vibe together, you can crush it with a business partner because what ends up happening is one plus one equals three, and that's leverage. So partnerships, and not just an actual business partner, but partnerships with other vendors, partnerships with non-competing service businesses, partnerships with other companies, partnerships with whoever can be a partner for you, it's leverage and it helps you go faster. And last but not least, the smartest thing I did in my 20s, hands down, this is probably the biggest one on, on the list, is I started focusing very intently on marketing and sales. By un, to how, how can I understand sales and marketing, behavioral psychology, the way humans think? Because having a really great product is not how you get successful. Having a really great product is cool. It's like a prerequisite. You should have something useful to sell to people, but it's the marketing of that thing that makes you successful. Mrs. Fields Cookies has cookie chains. All of these, these malls, shopping malls all, all over the United States, I'm sure they're great. I don't really eat Mrs. Fields Cookies, but they have a very profitable, gigantic company, right? Let me ask you, are they the best cookie ever? No, but they're good marketers. They have a model. They know how to scale. Sales and marketing is the number one deficiency for really small companies. They don't understand nuance and framing and pacing and future pacing and seeding. They don't understand how to anchor people and how to use the law of comparison to create juxtaposition. And if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, it's okay. Nobody does. But once you do, it's like a superpower. It almost feels unfair when you understand the timing and the targeting and the nuance and the way that you present and build an offer and the way that you sell it. When you understand this stuff, you can almost print money because you understand humans, you understand people. And marketing is not just marketing to, to make a sale. Marketing is how you recruit, retain, train uh, employees. Marketing is the way that you parent your kids. Marketing is just advanced, sophisticated communication. That's what it is. If you can become a gifted communicator, and you can because it's a learnable skill. You don't have to be the best communicator in the world. You don't have to be a perfect communicator, but if you can 10X or level up your ability to communicate clearly on the sales and marketing side, on the internal uh, customer side, meaning employees and at home, insane things will happen for you. Opportunity will fall out of the sky into your lap because the world revolves and moves around communicators who can cast clear vision, who have, can create compelling stories and messages. and how valuable would that be for your business? Hey, if you got value out of this video at all, please tell me. I would like to keep making them. Am I on the right track? Am I saying something wrong? What do you think? Be honest. Type it in the comments. Subscribe. Actually subscribe. Click the bell. Share this with a friend. Everybody says that. Almost nobody does it. But there's like three. I think there's three. Three of you. Are you one of the three that's going to do it? If you are, I appreciate you. Thank you in advance. It means a lot. And tell me, what should we be talking about here? Where are you stuck? Where are you struggling? I want to help. I don't have all the answers, but I have a lot of them because I've built and sold four companies. I've coached over a thousand business owners and I'm not just some guru coach guy. I only spend about a third of my time teaching like this. Two thirds of my time is spent running and building real companies just like you. So this is a gift to the world. Please share it. Let me know what you want to see in the next one and I'll see you on the next video.